before he get here. Hey, Gus, we brought you. We picked you up at the fire station, remember? Oh, yeah. Where's my mind sometimes? Well, since we're all together, we might as well do some fishing. Hey, what are those guys doing over there? Oh, they're setting up a theater like Use them for surveying. I didn't you know that was huh? No what? <laughs> hey, why would they want to survey here? Your grandmother said some sleazy developers trying to talk to city council for letting them build condos out here. Thanks. Kind of a creep want to wipe out Miller's pond. Hurry it up, you lowlife. Back to the work camp. <laughs> well, if it isn't some merry little fisherman. Hey, Beef, what do you need a pole for? Why don't you just swim out there and catch him in your paws? <laughs> I should have known you'd be the two-legged snake behind this. Eh, I'm just a hired gun. But this developer is my kind of guy. He was the only possible donor when his brother needed a kidney transplant. The guy made a bundle. Eddie, the people of this town aren't going to let you or any big shot developer destroy this place. Yeah. I'm shaking in my boots. You can't take away Miller's Pond. Why, I've been coming out here for 70 years. Well, that's long enough. Don't be selfish. Good afternoon, Mrs. Cleaver. My, that's a lovely babushka you're wearing. I didn't hear the doorbell. I didn't ring it. Here's some flowers for my best friend's mother. Uh, I tell that to Lumpy's mother, too, but I don't mean it. Really? Well, how thoughtful. I'll just put them in water. Yes, I thought that these precious flowers might inspire you as they did the legendary artist Claude Monet. And it just so happens I have two tickets to the Russian Impressionist exhibit tonight. Unfortunately, I have a very important city council meeting. Oh, that's right. You're voting on the Miller's Pond development issue. I assume a woman with your foresight does in favor of starting construction. Eddie, you wouldn't by any chance be working for the developer, would you? Well, yes. And for a king's ransom, I might add. Oh, but that's not the point. The future of our fine hamlet is at stake. When all the facts come into the city council, I assure you, I will study them closely. Might I say that uh, a vote in the right direction could benefit your whole family? Eddie, are you trying to bribe me? Mrs. Cleaver, you wound me. <laughs> now, as I recall, you're partial to pearls. <laughs> Bye, Eddie. You know what would look nice in your yard? A lap pool. Scram! <laughs> I like my orange juice freshly squeezed. Well, honey, I squeezed it myself last night. Last night? Well, then it isn't fresh, now, is it? <laughs> hey, it's okay. Not even your stale orange juice can upset me. Because before the day is over, I'm gonna land that Miller's Pond contract. I'll have so much money that you can go back to the dentist. Oh, <laughs> come on. Come on. We took care of that last night. <laughs> Top of the morning to you, sir. Three poached eggs, as per your instruction. Did you wear the hairnet? And the surgical mask. Good boy. Shoo. <laughs> Sleep like a baby, you she-devil. Change your Tell 
on you and inhale some bug spray and you didn't know what you were doing. I knew exactly what I was doing. Now, will you please leave? Not until you tell me why you've ruined my life. Mrs. Cleaver. June. Don't I always tell you how nice you look? Even yesterday when you were wearing that stupid babushka. <laughs> you look like a Russian fish. Mom. Cleaver. Will you please get him out of here? I'm not going anywhere until you tell me why you're against progress. Your choice, Eddie. Stairs or the window. I'm for progress, but not at the expense of our town. Now, the council has a very sensible annual growth plan. Three percent. Yeah, the beaver violates that every day at lunch. Grandma, what's all this? Grandma! Will you please get this maniac out of here? I demand satisfaction. Okay, fine, I'll leave. But you haven't heard the last of Eddie Haskell. Will you look at those sheets? I don't know why they say you have such great taste. Oh. <laughs> Vote for Edward Haskell for city council. Help lead Mayfield into the 21st century. Keep the dream alive. Vote Haskell for city council. And when I woke up from the dream, I asked myself, why can't we all live as brothers and sisters? I want to thank all of you for your past support. And if I am reelected, I want you to know I'll continue working for better schools and a Meals on Wheel program for the elderly. Why can't the world pull together and make global peace a reality? <laughs> That's my vision. And if you elect me, I will make it happen! And in conclusion, I'd just like to say that I'll continue to try to make Mayfield a nice place to live. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I ask you, no, I beg you, keep the dream alive! <laughs> Hi, Mom. How's it going? Uh, I'll never understand how those Kennedys who campaign all day then go play touch football. <laughs> Ollie! Kelly, what happened to you? Can I borrow your baseball bat to clobber Melissa hands for? Oh, I have a game tomorrow. Why don't you use a broom? Uh, honey, you can't just go around hitting people. Why not? She said that Grandma's so old that she goes into the voting booth and thinks she's getting her picture taken. I hate to say it, Mom, but it's time to take off the gloves in this campaign. Yeah. Yeah, Mom, you know, the beaver's right. I mean, how else are you going to fight somebody who talks out of both sides of their mouth and says exactly what people want to hear? Look, Mom, it's time to quit talking about parking spaces and tell this town what a phony Eddie really is. Yeah, Grandma. You know what my coach always says. If you can't beat him, hurt him, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, we're going to let these hassles take... Hold it. Now, I'm not about to stoop to Eddie's level. Look, I've served this town as well as I could for 12 years. And if they want to buy that baloney that he's dishing out, they can have him. I quit! Guess we're going out for dinner tonight. <laughs> Grandma? Can I ask you a question? Now isn't a very good time, honey. Well, it's really important. Well, as long as it's not about the election, okay? It has nothing to do with that. I was just wondering, how come kids got to do things that grown-ups want them to do, but grown-ups don't have to do those same things? This is about the election, isn't it? Well, maybe. Kinda. Mm -hmm. Remember the Fourth of July parade? I threw my baton up in the air, and it hit me on the nose. All I wanted to do was run and hide, but I didn't, because you said that winners never quit, and quitters never win. Come here. Honey, there's a big difference between a parade and an election. No, there isn't. You're still quitting. 
Come on, Grandma. I know you can win. Do it for me. Do it for the family. Do it for Mayfield. See, I told you I could talk Mama to getting out of the house. So what are you going to tell her when the show starts? There's no Andy Williams. Hello, fellow townspeople. I am Edward Kennedy Haskell, and I know what this town needs. Fresh ideas, new jobs, a dog track. But I can't do it without your vote. And without my loving wife and son. And these people... They're my family, too. And they ask you to vote for me, Edward Haskell, for city council. Keep the dream alive. Paid for by Citizens for Clean Government. Give to the Haskell campaign. Let freedom ring. Open up your hearts and your wallets. Remember, the Russians don't want to see Eddie Haskell elected. Eddie, what do you think you're doing? I'm soliciting contributions to wipe out your mother. <laughs> Save your breath, Eddie. Tomorrow morning, I'm officially withdrawing from the race. You quit? I knew you'd weasel out. I win! I win! I win! <laughs> you wouldn't have a prayer if this election was decided on the issues. Issues, misuse, I win! Hey, if you'd like some privacy, I can always ask the audience to leave. I'm awfully sorry about this. Well, I'm sorrier than she is. So sorry that after I'm elected, I'm going to name the new airport after you. There you go again. You're just promises and rhetoric. Could you take this debate someplace else? A debate? Oh, well, now, there's a wonderful idea. It'll give you an opportunity to outline your plans for leading Mayfield to the 21st century. Forget it, Mom. You need two intelligent people for a debate. <laughs> How to beat the elder statesman anytime, any place. Sir, debating may not be your forte. Might I suggest an archery match as an alternate solution? Who asked you? You just name the date. This Saturday afternoon. Fine. Right after I go to the synagogue to hustle some boats. Eddie Haskell, you were a sneaky little boy. And somebody should have put you over their knee a long time ago. And that's just what I intend to do. You're on. Issue to issue. Issue to issue. Hmm. <laughs> stuff she keeps harping about. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Maureen Dash of the Informed Voters Committee. Let me begin by introducing our candidates. First, our incumbent, Mrs. June Cleaver. And her opponent, Dr. Edward Haskell. Now the candidates will make their opening statements. Dr. Haskell. Good citizens of Mayfield. And might I say you're a handsome crowd. You know where I stand, so I won't bore you with details. You're not interested in speeches. You're interested in results. And that's what you'll get if you vote for Edward Haskell. And now, Mrs. Cleaver. I choose to run for a fourth term so that I can continue the work that I've begun. And I'm particularly pleased with the balanced budget that the council has achieved. My knowledge of government is based on years of experience. <laughs> And I hope you'll give me a chance to utilize that experience for another successful term. Thank you. Our first question is, why do you think you are the best candidate, Doctor? <laughs> it's not important what I think. It's important what you, my fellow Mayfelians, think. I want this campaign to be decided on the issues and only on the issues. I refuse to discuss the way that some candidates 
are misusing city funds. That's not true. I said I refuse to discuss it. And I also don't want to talk about who took all those trips to the state capitol on taxpayers' money. That was to get school funds I for... I believe it's my turn to speak. <laughs> if elected, I promise you a town to be proud of. Or my name isn't Dr. Edward Haskell, <laughs> man of the people. Yay! And now, Mrs. Cleaver, why do you think you are the best candidate? Well, to begin with, Dr. Haskell's accusations are just ridiculous. So I prefer to spend this time on my five-point plan for the future. First, I would like to have a balanced budget. And then, secondly, a welcome plan. Uh, so that everybody would keep at home in safety. For three, to create new control for our landscaping so that all of our six parks would be kept in a, a nice manner. Uh, and then, a point four, uh, but school overcrowding. Uh, point five is my most important of all, and that's the realistic growth rate. Hey. Well, that's my five-point plan for the future, and I think that makes me the better candidate. One of the major issues of this campaign is the development of Miller's Pond. Would each of you please tell us where you stand on this project, Doctor? Every intelligent person in this town, and you all are, <laughs> must realize the importance of developing Miller's Pond. The income generated from this project means lower taxes, and lower taxes means more money in your pockets. And if money doesn't buy happiness, I don't know what does. <laughs> The only pockets that are going to get lined with money are yours and the developer who's bankrolling your campaign. There's a bigger issue here. Miller's Pond is more than just money. Why, it's one of the things that makes Mayfield such a special place to live. Maybe our town isn't in the forefront of progress. And maybe life does go by a little bit slower here. But maybe that's what makes me love it so much. Why? People get to know each other here, and they take the time to care about each other. We can't lose Miller's Pond. Well, I took my children there when they were young, and now they take their children there. I want to see the day when they can take their children there. And that's the dream worth keeping alive. <laughs> Cleaver. She's got this one in the bag. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> thank you, thank you. But while the momentum may be changing, let's not forget that was just one little debate. So I was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> well, a cold hot fudge just won't do. <laughs> Good evening, Mrs. Mrs. Cleaver. Why, what a lovely outfit you're wearing. Thank you. Would you like to join us for some ice cream? Sure. Frederick, heel. Thank you, Mrs. Cleaver, but we didn't come by for free eats this time. We just stopped by to inform you that I'm dropping out of the race. Well, that's quite a surprise. Yeah, it just so happens I was checking my social calendar, and as chance would have it, Inauguration Day falls on the exact same day that I'm to be honored by the Drywall Association. What a shame. There's no way you could reschedule a presentation? I'd love to, but my word is my bond. Oh, uh, by the way, that, that crack about you being old. Gert's idea. I can see how that could happen in the heat of the campaign. 
Yeah, we fought hard. And you fought clean. <laughs> well, in any case, I'm kind of disappointed. I was looking forward to a good battle. But so was my father, until he found out that all city officials have to make a full financial disclosure. Congratulations, Councilwoman. Thank you, Eddie. Tomorrow at 6.05 Eastern in an all-new episode of the new Leave it to Beaver, The Cleaver Family Reminisces, and a special episode you've all been waiting for. But first, stay tuned for more map-pounding action on World Championship Wrestling, next on The Superstation.